Hey guys, this is Victor, the Wise Traditions Nutritionist from Vitagenics. And today I want to speak to you about what is a probiotic. So I've been getting some strange questions, people telling me that um, like yogurt is not a probiotic or kefir or sauerkraut is not a probiotic. And so I want to make sure that it's clear. Th those are definitely probiotics and we're going to talk about that here as to why. So it's stated pretty clearly by like the World Health Organization and this other uh, food and agriculture organization. They actually have done some joint papers and it's really simple. I think everyone already understands, right? These when we consume something or even apply something, it's live microorganisms, right? Live microbes that are supposedly or hopefully they're beneficial to us, right? They're not causing us harm. Okay, so it's a really simple, clear definition um, that was started, you know, a while ago, almost 20 years ago, and just reaffirmed more recently in 2014. Now, the word itself, probiotic, has been around for quite a long time, and we've been using it for food and even factory type of products. Of course, like yogurt and stuff is basically being manufactured now, right? But there are many different things, and the word has been in use for, I don't know, for many decades. It was first coined back in the 1950s, and again, it's more recently that the, they're trying to standardize the meaning, but at this point, it's kind of common knowledge. Everyone understands. We think of fermented foods uh, when we say probiotic, or nowadays we also think of the supplements, the capsules, etc., now, of course, probiotics are also in the environment all around us. And this is where a lot of the uh, probiotic capsules, the supplements, they're trying to get us like some soil-based organisms or things we would get from being out in the forest, out in the wild, uh, that we may not get now living in the city. So anyway, probiotics, good microbes, right? Microbes that help us, microbes that benefit us. So... Again, these organizations, they kind of put out these definitions, and there's always people talking about it. And now there's this other standard body, this International Science Association uh, for probiotics, actually, and prebiotics specifically, this ISAPP. And they have also, just this year, they reaffirmed the definition put out by the World Health Organization. Uh, and they also made some other strange comments. They suggested that yogurt should maybe not be a probiotic because they're not testing it. Look, you know, of course, there are so many brands of probiotic, of, of yogurt. Maybe some are not so great. Maybe some are terrible. That's true. But quality has nothing to do with definition, right? These are still probiotics. Um, so, yeah, so the ISAPP, they suggested that some foods not have not been clearly proven as probiotics. But again... You know, the way we look at it, fermented foods are probiotics, and it's very hard to prove that they're not. Okay, so aside from the contradictions, the ISAPP still upholds the same definition, which, you know, is pretty much common sense to us, microbes that help us out, All right? Most of us understand that already. So why do we care about uh, a formal definition? Why do we care about what people are saying? Well, we do have an issue, right? We have many products that are abusing the word probiotic for marketing. So as fermented foods gain popularity and probiotics in general gain popularity, as we understand more and more about the gut, you're going to have business try to take advantage of this for marketing. And so we're seeing that happen. And then even in the case with probiotic foods like yogurt, there are so many brands of yogurt and they're not all great for you. I'm not saying they're not probiotics. I still think they are um, because, again, quality is a different issue. I, actually, I myself years ago used to say that yogurt was a prebiotic because I didn't consider it really powerful enough to be a probiotic. But I, I actually corrected myself because I think it's not right for me to judge. Again, yogurt is a very general term. There are all different kinds of yogurt. And so certainly, you know, yogurt is a probiotic, right? They have good microbes in it, uh, aside from the ones that might be really terrible for you or just filled with dead, uh, dead microbes. 
Okay, so the term probiotic, it's come to carry a therapeutic meaning. So this gives it more value in the marketplace, right? So now people are understanding, oh yeah, I need my probiotics. And so again, this is going to get the hype machines going, you know, for people trying to market their own uh, fermented foods or other probiotic products. So I understand we need tightening up of the definition maybe, but again, you know, you can get certification. Certification is a different thing. So be aware that supplements are not the only products that are being sold as probiotics. And this is part of the motivation for digging into the definition more, to try to control all these different products. So, of course, a lot of this uh, is coming from industry, right? People that are manufacturing things. But again, for me, it doesn't change. Uh, a probiotic is a probiotic, right? So and it's very difficult to prove a negative. So even if I look at the worst probiotic supplements or capsules or the worst yogurt, it's difficult for me to prove that the microbes in there do not have benefit because it is so complicated. And so we're going to look at this a little in a little more detail to help you understand why it's difficult to prove a negative, okay? So we already understand the basics. You know, fermented foods have been around for thousands of years. Ferments will always equal probiotics uh, in my mind, and this really should not be debatable. Of course, effectiveness is, but that has to do with quality and many other factors. So again... Probiotic, it's a word that's been in use since the 1950s. Why are we talking about this definition, right? It's just a word. It's not a certification. Uh, I don't care really about certifications. There aren't any that I'm talking about here. We're just talking about the use of this vocabulary word, probiotic, right? So we don't want people to be misled, or I don't want people to be misled by wordplay, okay? So you really got to do your own research. Uh, it's the same in most of my videos. I always say, you know, just do your research, find out what food is good, whether it's a probiotic or otherwise. You got to do your research to make sure you know what's going on. Don't be getting caught up in the marketing hype, okay? So there are good and bad probiotics. So so imagine if some company comes out and they put out this really great yogurt and they say, we have this certified probiotic, it's fantastic. Well, what about the rest of the ingredients, right? It could be loaded with bad chemicals that you really don't want. It's not worth it. So there, and of course, there are also bad probiotics, meaning they're just not very useful. Again, it's difficult to judge. Do your own research. Don't just rely on the definition of a word or marketing hype. Okay, uh, guidelines for judging quality are helpful, uh, but again, it's a very complicated thing because even a good probiotic might not fit you as an individual at that particular moment in your life. So everyone is unique. Uh, everyone has different needs, different requirements, which change over time. Uh, you know, whatever the conditions that you might be going through at one moment may be helped by one probiotic and not another. And then later on, maybe you need other probiotics. So you never know. So you always do your homework. Overall, we know we need probiotics. Okay, so most certifications have no meaning to me. I mean, you know, you look at the USDA organics, they allow hundreds of chemicals. So again, do your research, just go and find a source that you know that you have checked and you have found that it is clean and safe. All right, so moving on. Do microbes have to survive when you consume them? Okay, no, they do not have to survive. So you eat yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, whatever. Accord, and this again, this is according to all these you know, alphabet agencies that I mentioned, the World Health Organization, etc. The probiotics must only be alive when administered or acquired or consumed or applied, etc. So when you when you get it, it must be living and then you use it. It doesn't matter if it can get past your mouth or past your gut. If it dies in your mouth or dies in your gut, that's okay. It's still a probiotic, okay? So live cultures ensure integrity, 
you don't want to be eating stuff that's dead because you don't know how long it's been decomposing and what state it might be in. So when you have a live community, you are now ensure of the integrity of those microbes, of those probiotics. In addition, you're you're also aware or you know of or can be sure of the integrity of all the other things in that culture, in that environment. Okay, so why don't they have to survive when you're consuming them or applying them? Again, this verbiage here that I'm showing, it's coming from the World Health Organization. Uh, no, this is coming from ISAPP, actually. Um, but you can find it anywhere. Microbes have a lot of value to us, to our gut biome, okay? Even when they die, right? They are still very valuable. They contribute many things. Microbes exchange DNA uh, in order to help them adapt and change. RNA is used to help trigger things in our body. I'm talking about the microbial DNA, RNA. Uh, so there's a lot of value even when it dies. So it's still probiotic. It doesn't matter. You know, you, you hear this talk that it's not going to survive the gut or it's not going to survive the intestines, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's still a probiotic. These are still microbes that are giving you benefits. And uh, again, even according to these standards bodies, yeah. All right. Okay, so another question, do these microbes have to thrive in the gut? Meaning, do they have to get in there and populate your gut and continue living? Again, the answer is no. They don't have to do that in order to be considered a probiotic, right? So, one, because of the reasons already stated, even dead, they're still useful. So it doesn't matter when they die. Now, potential life lifespans vary greatly. So, because some of them will live and some of them will not. Some of them will thrive, will populate more than others. But the variability is huge. It depends on so many things. You know, who you are as an individual, your cur the current terrain of your gut, your DNA, what you eat, your lifestyle, etc. There are so many factors that, can, that uh, influence whether one particular probiotic will thrive or not in your particular gut. So how can you define it by that, right? So, and again, if they're good, even when they die immediately, of course, they're still good if they live a little bit longer. Now, many probiotics uh, or microbes will be gone after a few days, right? So they'll, they'll live and maybe they cannot keep their colony going for long. Like when you travel abroad, and you start consuming a lot of different foods, when you come back within a week or less, all those microbes that may have populated your gut will be gone. Why? Because they're not being reinforced. So this is the other thing that's really important to understand. A healthy diet reinforces the microbes regularly. This is the key. You want to be eating a healthy diet. You're always consuming them. Even if you're taking a product, if you're taking supplements and eating uh, fermented foods, you're taking them all the time. So it does not have to maintain itself forever, right? It's, it's just not necessary. So the idea of that it needs to thrive uh, in order to be called a probiotic, no, that has no meaning at all, okay? So another thing to consider, especially when it comes to eating fermented foods, uh, and, and why I always say fermented foods are the best probiotics, because you are consuming an enormous volume when you do that. So when you you drink, well, it depends, but like for kefir example, you drink a glass of kefir, that's like consuming 20 bottles of probiotics, okay? The volume is enormous. Now, when you're drinking a glass of kefir, your stomach is not going to be able to kill all those microbes. I wish it could. Listen, we all are concerned about digestion. We actually consume kefir to help us digest our other food. Kefir is even helping us, right? It's producing enzymes and giving us metabolites to help us digest. But the volume of kefir is so huge, of course, a lot of it is going to get past the gut. So volume is very important. If I take one little drop of kefir and I, and I swallow it, yeah, it's going to be destroyed by my gut. But, you know, it's a whole different ball game, not just what you eat, but how you eat it, when you eat it, when you eat it with, and the quantity. So this is one reason why the foods are so important, because you're consuming probiotics in very large quantities, 
and with a lot of other valuable resources, metabolites, etc. So again, these are the reasons why uh, a probiotic is still a probiotic, even if it does not survive and thrive in the gut. It doesn't have to, right? So I mean, th there's not even a product that I know of uh, that you consume once and you're done because it lives forever in your gut. No, that's not the idea. You want to get into a healthy lifestyle where you're constantly bringing in the probiotics, okay? All right, you are what you eat very much so uh, in this case when it comes to probiotics and, and such. Okay, so look, what is a probiotic, right? So I mentioned kefir, all types of fermented foods, yogurt, sauerkraut, beet kvass. There are so many wonderful foods that are probiotics. Now, some of them might not be very effective probiotics. They might not be very good. But generally speaking, this is your first source and your primary source of probiotics is coming from your food. So definitely try to get more fermented foods into your diet. Not only fermented foods, but more natural foods. So for example, if you're pulling your vegetables out of the ground and your fruits off of a tree and you're eating them direct, you could be getting very healthy spores uh, into your body. And, and this is how we used to do it, right? This is how we used to get a lot of probiotics. And of course, even like forest bathing, you know, we don't, this is not a probiotic, right? It's an activity. But forest bathing is important, okay? It's another way for us to get probiotics into our diet, okay? There are, not into our diet, I mean into our body. There are many probiotic strains out there in the forest. There are spores that will get into your body, onto your skin. Remember, it's not only about consuming, okay? Also, contact with animals and people. This is excellent, okay? Another source of probiotics of good microbes. And again, right, we don't use the word probiotic when we're talking about these things, but I just want to give you the bigger picture. Uh, this is how you get good microbes into you. Now, when we talk about supplements and other products, these manufactured things, they're actually trying to augment nature or bring us to nature, right? So some of these, uh, there, there are some really good probiotic supplements out there in the market that I like especially some of the spore-based ones, and they're trying to bring you the things, the spores, the microbes from the soil and from the environment that we are no longer getting because we spend too much time indoors in the city. So these things are good, right? So again, even the, the products are trying to augment or replace or imitate nature because we're not getting out into nature enough. So that's about it. I hope this helps you. I hope it clears up some of the confusion about what a probiotic is. If somebody tells you that your yogurt is not a probiotic or your sauerkraut is not a probiotic, uh, you know, don't don't be deterred by that. Uh, you look into it yourself. You know, if your sauerkraut was fermented for a long time, it's probably got a lot of really good microbes for you. And certainly uh, most of your People out there making your own kefir, great probiotic, lots of great yogurt, so many different things, fermented vegetables, etc. So definitely keep eating your fermented food. Um, I definitely do recommend looking at also the products that are out there. I mean, a lot of you, you know, we can't get enough. There are some fantastic probiotic supplements out there, uh, such as um, the Just Thrive and Seed and uh, a bunch of others. Uh, I don't want to just start listing off products, but uh, definitely this is not just about food. As I said, we, we can get the good microbes from many different sources. So good luck to you. I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions, please let me know.